So we're going to look at a bunch of different graphs, kind of sketch them over there. Sometimes we'll hand it to you in what's called the factor form, right? So I know right away I should look at the bottom. I'm going to have an issue at negative 2, and I'm going to have an issue at positive 2, right? Yes. Okay. Because I can't use the, I can't plug in 2 and negative 2. It'll make, if I plug in negative 2, it makes this one 0. If I plug in positive 2, it makes that one 0. Now, what happens when x plus 2 is also a factor up top? It would kind of be like this. We'd want to do that. So what does that tell you? If the factor appears on the top and the bottom, that it's a whole. So we have a whole at x equals negative 2. We have a vertical asymptote at x equals 2. That's the remaining factor on the bottom. You can set, you know, you can set that equal to 0, add 2, Okay, so I'm going to put that on the graph. So I'm going to put a vertical asymptote at x equals 2. Now, what's going to be difficult in this form is coming up with the, um, the degrees and stuff. So I'm just going to show you, some of you probably can already see what it is, but the top is x squared plus 2x. And the bottom is x squared minus 4. What degree do we have? A second degree over a second degree. So when they're equal, what are we supposed to do? That was rule number one. It's really a 1x one, one squared over 1x squared, correct? So what's 1 divided by 1? So that means we're going to have a horizontal asymptote at 1. I'm going to put a parenthesis for the top and type it in the way they gave it to me. X, and then that was, um, what is it, X plus 2? Yep. Okay, so they gave it to us in the factor form. So the way I'm typing it in, we're going to have tons of parentheses. You guys might want to take the blue one that I wrote down. It might be easier for you to type it in. But um, So I had start and stop my numerator. Then I divide by... And on the bottom, I think it's going to be easier for me to just type in x squared minus 4 and graph it. So when you graph it, there you can see the vertical asymptote. Where did we say the hole was located? Negative 2. At negative 2. So what I'm going to do is go back to my window and go like uh, negative 3 to negative 1. And then you don't have to do this. I'm just showing you. You can see the hole in the graph now right there. When you're zoomed out, negative 10 to 10, negative 10 to 10, it's, you really don't see that. You know, we don't have high definition screens. We're dealing with some pretty minor pixelation stuff, whatever. But anyway. Um, so when you get done with this graph, I'm going to go back to zoom 6, you know it has that same inverse shape that we did the other day. So top right corner, bottom corner, so up here, does this. And when you come in on the bottom corner, remember you have a hole at negative 2. So as it comes in, just draw a hole there and go down. So you can see the vertical asymptote, the horizontal, and where the hole is located. We're going to use our graphing calculator to type it in and get the shape on the test, but now you'll see why things are leveling off or looking the way they look. All right. 
So when, when you're given a problem like this, you might want to look, remember the rules, the instructions on the previous page were maybe look to factor it. So on the top, I can factor out an x. And I'm left with x plus 3. So you should always get in a habit of taking your denominator off to the side. Set it equal to 0. Subtract 3. And I get this negative 3. And then ask yourself, at negative 3, is it going to be a vertical asymptote or will it be a hole in the ground? So is negative 3 going to be a hole or a vertical asymptote? It's going to be a hole because you have the x plus 3 factor on the top and bottom. So x equals negative 3 will be a hole. What will this graph behave like? y equals x. So if you go back to your calculator, clear that one out. Um, on top, the original was x squared plus 3x. Put that in parentheses. Divide by x plus 3, right? So you have to be very careful when you put it in there. Parentheses are on the top and the bottom. Notice it's a straight line. We can't really see it on the graph because, it, like I said, the pixels are a little weird, but there is a hole at 3. So when you graph this thing, just draw your straight line. Oh, at negative 3? Sorry. One, two, three. So there seems to be a hole there at negative three. Now, we don't have a vertical asymptote and the horizontal asymptote. Look at the graph. Do we have a horizontal asymptote? No. Why? Because it was a big degree over a small. It was x squared. I should write it. It was x squared, so it's second degree over first degree. So there is no horizontal asymptote. We have three, four, and five to complete. What I would like you to do is with somebody sitting near you, work on this. Now, please understand. Not all polynomials factor nicely and all this stuff. So you have, you have to know that when we give you worksheets and tests, quizzes, whatever, that we want you to find some stuff that will work. So as you look at these different quadratics, some of them are easier to factor than others. But a lot of times, if you can factor the bottom, you might assume one of those factors is up top and, and you know, it, should give you some hints in the problem. So start by factoring these with somebody sitting near you. Then start going back and identifying are they holes or asymptotes. Then find your horizontal asymptote using the rule. And the final thing is, whenever you do this right now, when you're practicing, make sure you're typing it into the calculator and you're checking that against somebody else. Because if I type one thing wrong, like one positive or negative sign, my graph is going to look different than the person sitting next to me. So double check that before you start graphing. So do that, and then we'll put the answers up here. If you have questions, let me know. Listen, listen, listen. When I look at these quadratics, I want to factor them. The bottom difference of squares factors into x plus 5, x minus 5. The top factors into x minus 6, x plus 1. The reason why we're doing this is to see if anything wants to cross off. And in this case, there aren't any common factors on the top and the bottom. So then the two factors on the bottom have to be set equal to zero. When you do that, the first one is actually going to give you a negative 5. So you'll have a vertical asymptote at negative 5. 
The second one gives you a five. You're going to have a vertical asymptote at five. So when you look at the graph, to stay consistent, I'm going to put these in red. These are the vertical asymptotes. X equals five. X equals negative five. That tells me, because nothing crossed off, that we won't have the hole, so there's nothing there. And then the horizontal asymptote, you're looking at a second degree, a second degree divided by a second degree. So you go to the leading coefficients, one and one. So you're one over one or one. So that's this one. So the last step then is to type this into graphing calculator. It's probably easier to do the original this time. Put parentheses around the top, put parentheses around the bottom when you divide, and you will get a graph that looks like that. I mean, it's a crazy looking graph, but now you guys have an understanding of why it looks like it's leveling off here and why it's not using these two values here. So. x squared minus 16 on the top factors into x plus 4, x minus 4. x squared plus 3x minus 4 factors into x plus 4, x minus 1. It's at this point that you should see x plus 4s are the same on the top and the bottom. When you set, when you set that x plus 4 equal to 0, you subtract 4 on both sides, you get negative 4. That's a hole at negative 4 because the factor appears on top and the bottom. There's still this extra factor of x minus 1 on the bottom. So you're going to set x minus 1 equal to 0, add the 1 to both sides, x is 1. That's the vertical asymptote. You cannot use 1. So you go over to your graph, draw in your vertical asymptote at 1. My horizontal asymptote is x squared over x squared. Again, they have equal degrees. So that means you use the leading coefficients, which is 1x squared and 1x squared. So that's why there's a horizontal asymptote at y equals 1. Then you go to your graph and calculator. Put the top in parentheses, put the bottom in parentheses, divide. And then what you'll find is you have this, what looks like a reflected inverse relation type thing that we did yesterday. We know there's a hole there. Bottom one is a difference of squares. This is 3x plus 1, 3x minus 1. The bottom you want to start by factoring out the x. And you're left with 3x squared plus 5x minus 2. Now, for some of you, a, a quadratic like that is going to be difficult to factor. There are methods that I've taught you. You can do completing the square to solve it, to try and get your factors. You can use a quadratic formula. You can just use a guess and check method and try to solve it. But it does factor into 3x minus 1, x plus 2. This is where I'm talking. We probably, in a problem like this, with so many things happening, would have one similar factor. So if you have 3x plus 1, 3x minus 1, put the 3x and the 1 in here, what would the other one have to be? You can get some hints that way. 3x minus 1 is a common factor on top and bottom. Be very careful when you set that equal to 0. So now you have to add 1 to both sides. Divide by 3 on both sides. Then divide by 3. That's why x is 1 third. There's a hole when x is 1 third. We still have the x plus 2 factor. When you set that equal to 0, you have the x minus 2. Don't forget about the x. Yeah, we factored it out at the beginning, but it's still there. So when you set that equal to 0, you actually have two vertical asymptotes and one hole in the graph. 
How do you do the horizontal asymptote? Second degree, third degree. What happens when it's second over third? Second over third, it's small over big, it's gonna to go to zero. So you have the horizontal asymptote at zero. Go to your graph and calculator. You can see where things are lining up. Identify where the hole is at. 